Hey everyone, this is Steve Jackson with Imprintables Warehouse and today I'm going to do a little bit of graphic editing here and show you how to work with a combined graphic that has both a roster image of the flower you see on the left hand side and a vector graphic which is the lettering over here. If we switch to our wireframe view and take a quick look at this you can see that the box around there and everything grayed out on the insi inside of it indicates that that's a roster graphic and then over here we have our vector graphic. If I use my object properties docker that I use a lot, I'll come over to this and we'll click onto that roster graphic portion here. And I've got this icon at the end right here on bitmap and it shows me the properties of it. And this one's 510 by 510 DPI or really pixels per inch. It's not dots from a, a printer, it's pixels when it's on the screen and computer here. And we can see there's the actual pixels itself and what color scheme it's in 24 bit RGB color. So we see all the properties of that. Now I could go in and zoom in on this and trace in between these or use a, uh, not trace, draw it all out manually and, and work through the whole graphic. Or this is a pretty high resolution image that we're working with here. Let's try some of the auto trace features that are in Corel and see how well it works. So we'll go back to our enhance view here. And I'm going to select right up at the top and notices that, recognize that this is a bitmap and allows me to do the trace function on it. So, I'll jump onto an outline trace and we'll call this a detailed logo. And it has to reduce the size of it because it is so large, uh, you get to a certain point where there's no real use in, in going any further. Now if I wanted to leave that as a bitmap and just use the outline that I'm going to create, say my trace doesn't come out exact, which this one didn't come out too bad here. I can see all the spots, but it missed all the little uh, stitch kind of looking pieces up in here. There's a before and after view, and I, I like personally the um, wireframe overlay view. And that way I can see what it's missing and what it's not, change the transparency of it, maybe punch it up a, a little bit so that we can see it on the screen there better. And I can see that I'm missing some spots in there, so maybe I'll, I'll kick up the detail a little bit right here and see if it gets more of that. But in reality, I don't necessarily have to uh, get all of these different portions in here exactly on there because what I'm really looking for in this is the outline. I want to use that outline for a cut contour because you can see there's some issues like in here that if I were to draw this by hand I, I would not have that little artifact that's right there. I would make that a perfect circle and have it behind this piece here. But if my line around the outside of it is, is very close I can even kick up the detail a little bit more and see if that gets it even better because I can see my edges in here aren't exact. That's pretty darn good around there. So let's, let's go back to the original graphic, and I can tell it to delete the original image or remove the background. I'm not going to have it delete the original image because I'm going to use that. It was a high enough resolution for a print and cut job that it's going to be a very nice looking graphic. So I'll leave the original image there, and I'll hit OK. And when we come back into Corel, now I could drag this to the side, and you'll see that I have two different items here and if we go to our wireframe view this one's completely vector and this one's still that roster image so I'll put that back so they're one right over another I hit control Z for that and now I'm gonna right click on it and tell it to ungroup because all I really want is the outlines around everything here so I can delete everything on the inside so there's a number of different ways I could do this uh, I could just kinda select whole sections of it there like that and hit delete or I could take the one section and I selected a whole bunch there. Nope. See, I lost part of that piece around there, so that's not going to work. I can take this here, and it looks like it's all combined together. So I'll right click on it and I'll break that curve apart. And I could see that because, let me hit Control Z, it's a curve on layer one right here, and it's one single object that I've selected, but it does have a whole bunch of other pieces in it that are just connected together because it's a single curve. So what I can do, because I can see there's individual pieces if I break it apart, is I right-clicked on it and then break the curve apart. And now when I deselect off of it, I'm clicking off to the side so I'm not touching that there. I'll click on this here and you can see I've just got the outer edge. If I hit F4, it'll zoom out and show me the whole graphic. If I were to move that to the side, you'll see just the piece I wanted to, to select there. So that makes me happy. And now I could either lock that in place or I can take big chunks of what's inside of here and just delete them and go around until I get all the pieces parts that I want out. I'll delete that portion there and I've got these guys here so I want to kind of select around them without selecting the other pieces. Grab that one, delete, delete, 
Looks like there's a couple pieces in there. And let's hit F4. We've got all this up here that I have to get rid of. And there we go. I've got some nice lines around everything. A little bit of artifact. I can see an issue right there, so I could go and clean that up if I wanted to. Or another trick I can do with this, I'll hit F4 to make it zoom out again. And I'll go back to my regular view. I can take this piece here and I'll give it no fill and right click on my cut contour so it's got that cut contour color and I can do the same with the rest of those pieces down below because I'm not concerned about what their fill colors are I'm more concerned about using them as a cut line for this so I'll select all of those hit F4 so I can see what's going on here I'll give it no fill and right click on my cut contour color so now when I zoom in on it, I can see I've got these cut lines. Now this is a little bit of an issue right in here where those aren't quite matching up. If I come down a little bit, I can see that most of the rest of them are pretty darn close to on the edge, and it looks good for the graphic that I'm working with. But right up in there, there's a little bit of an issue. So let's address that real quick. Let's try taking this piece here and maybe the bigger piece, and we'll see if welding them will make it get rid of it. And look at that. It got rid of most of the artifact issue that I was looking at where I had those uneven lines. And now I've got very minimal editing. I can go to my node edit tool and we'll put an anchor node here, an anchor node there. I double clicked on the line to create a node in there and I'm just going to delete that one in between. And that got rid of most of it there. Maybe we can even delete this guy here and that looks nice and smooth now on around. And we'll take a look over here. There's a little bit of an artifact there so maybe I'll, I'll bring this guy down into there and I'll take this node over and smooth that out much better. Maybe grab this guy and smooth it into there a bit. I dragged the control handle down so that looks pretty good. I might be off right there. I just noticed off to the side. No, it looks all right. Close enough. So now I've got this entire cut line around the, the image and everything's where I want it to and I've still got that original graphic in the background there that was a very high DPI or pixels per inch right there. Very nice graphic, very crisp. And of course, when we zoom really close into it, we can see those pixels because it is still a roster image, but it will do very well for the job that we've selected here. So I'll put that back. Now for the portion over here, the lettering, this is the easiest out of all of them. It's a single, single uh, piece, single graphic. If we look at it in wireframe, you can see that there's no overlapping lines or anything. So I'll go back to my enhanced view. All I have to do on that is right click and now I've got a cut line all around it. Right clicked on my cut contour. Now if I wanted a bleed zone on this, I get this question a lot. I'm trying to do a bleed zone because my, my cutting's a little bit off. I'm doing you know 50 of these at a time and I want to make sure that if it's a little bit off that nobody will ever see it. Well now that I've got the graphic created and I've got my cut line there, I can make a copy of it. So I'll hit Control C to copy it and Control V to paste it. So I've got my, my pasted one on there. On the pasted one, we can go over to our line, the outline tool right here, and we'll change the color. So we want to go to color and uh, width, sorry, and we'll give it a hairline width or something even thicker. Let's go to a real thick one. I want this to bump out around it. So now you can see it's really thick and bumped up around it. For the color, I'll drop down my color and use the eyedropper tool and select the color that's in there. So now it's the same exact color as everything else around there. But now I'm going to arrange it, and I'll order to back of page, and you'll see that now that outline bumps out around it, and I've got a bleed zone around here. So bleed zones are pretty easy to work with, especially if it's a single color graphic like this one here. And if I've got the graphic over here, and I want to combine all these, well, maybe I'll take all the lower portion here, and I'll select them all, and I'll go up to my combine tool. So it's all one piece now. There's one curve right there, and they're all connected together. And then I'll select the one on top, and I'll combine that one with it. I hit Shift while I selected that. So we can see that's one single piece there. And if I wanted to bump this in, say, a pixel or two, just so that I'm cutting into it, so that I'm working into the graphic for my cut and giving a little bleed zone that way, well, I can come over to my toolbox on the left-hand side here, and I'll use the Contour tool. you got to use that little triangle nib because the, the one that comes to default is the blend tool. So I'll click on that little triangle and here's my contour tool. And I'm going to contour to the inside and 0.1 is probably way too much. We'll try 0 0.05 and see how that works. That may be too much. It's also, yeah, I can see it jumped in quite a bit there. So we're going to have to dial this down. I can dial it down, 
to where I feel comfortable. Let's zoom in on the graphic, and that's pretty good, just a little bit in there. But remember that contour is now a property and is connected to the one on the outside. So we need to break those apart. The shortcut key is Control K, or I can go to Arrange and Break Contour Group Apart. Once that contour group is broken apart, I need to go back to my Select Tool or Pick Tool. And I'll click off so I'm not selecting any of the graphic, although I clicked onto the uh, roster graphic there. And I got outside, and what I did is I zoomed out so I was outside of it and clicked off of it, left click. Now I'm going to zoom in, take that original cut line I had, and I can see I just have the one curve, and it's the cut line I had. And we'll delete that, and we'll take the second cut line here that doesn't have the cut contour color, but I'll come over to my cut contour color, right click, and now it has a cut contour color. If I hit F4, I can see the entire graphic is set up, my cut lines around it. If I zoom in on these areas, I'll hit Z and zoom in. You can see that it's just barely inside all of these, so I've got a little bit of a bleed zone. So not too much to it. I kind of went fast here. Uh, you can review the video as much as you want. Please leave me a comment. Let me know what other stuff you guys are looking for. But this is a simple way to work with a roster and a vector graphic within Corel Draw. Set up your cut lines using the trace function and uh, do a little bit of bleed work so that you can make sure that if your accuracy is slightly off that no one will see it. I hope, hope it was helpful for you and uh, hope to see you on the next video. Thanks for stopping by.